Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us observe management of this hypermature Morganian cataract. The patient is an 80 years old man. The patient came today morning with raised IOP, intraocular pressure was 50 millimeter of mercury. Before surgery, we administered 300 ml of 20% mannitol. We did for half an hour. The patient's intraocular pressure came down to 30 millimeter of mercury. And then I have taken up this case for surgery. By this time, all the incisions have been made. An air bubble has been injected into the anterior chamber. The capsule is being stained with tripan blue dye. And now this is adrenaline. The people has not dilated well in this case. So I am applying adrenaline to see if the people dilates little more. Preoperatively I have applied, I have instilled flarbiprofen and probably in that helped to maintain the dilatation during surgery. The dye is washed out and then 2% hydroxypyl methyl cellulose is injected into the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is filled up with this visco and now see what happens as I try to do capsulorexis. A 26 case band needle is being used to make a puncture in the anterior capsule and as soon as the anterior capsule is punctured this is milky fluid. Homogeneous milky fluid comes out means it is hypermature Morgagnian cataract. If the fluid that comes out is oily a small bit with particles then it is an intumescent cataract. In hypermature Morgagnian cataracts, after making the puncture itself, we can aspirate the milky fluid. The rexis doesn't go to periphery. And now visco is again injected. Utrita forceps is taken. Hold this capsular tag and as I try to make a rexis and go for about three clock hours see what happens lot of lot more milky fluid comes out and so I'm going to use the 23 gauze Simco again to aspirate some more milky fluid so that rexis becomes very comfortable and we can make out at this time that the nucleus is very hard. We could not make out at the beginning of the surgery but I knew about two years back the patient came when the cataract was mature and at that time I could make out the hardness of the nucleus and we had some documents in the patient's case sheet and now the patient came with this white layer of milky fluid all around this hard nucleus and there was no way to make out how hard the nucleus is but now after aspirating the milky fluid and after doing this rexis we can make out this is a very hard nucleus almost cataracta nigra and now this is a free floating nucleus in such cases this is the technique go bevel down into the substance of the nucleus and make a tunnel and now come out because in bevel down position I don't find that comfort to divide the nucleus with the chopper. 
So make the bevel up, go through the tunnel now. And now I'll be able to go into the substance of the nucleus. But in free floating nucleus, without making this tunnel, it is difficult to go into the substance of the nucleus. And now I go through the nucleus towards the opposite equator and this is the first job. And this is a very nice crack. At this time we must give opposite lateral forces of adequate amount so that the genule is not stressed. And now I rotate 180 degree, sculpt for some time and then hold the on heminucleus and try to separate the two heminuclei. Yes, I have been able to separate the two heminuclei completely. Now I go into through the substance of the nucleus and this is another very nice crack but these two fragments are not free they are joined to each other at the center. I tried to tilt the heminucleus and apply some power at the joining of these two fragments but it was not possible. We will do something else. Now I rotate the nuclear pieces, get on to the other heminucleus, go into the substance of this heminucleus, go towards the opposite equator and then make this very deep and nice crack. And again these two nuclear pieces are not free. They are joined at the center and this is the endonucleus. I remove this endonucleus and even then it was not possible to get onto the joining of these two fragments. So I just leave it and we will do something else. Inject visco, make the entry chamber deep and now I am going to use my chopper and a Sinsky hook. Mohanta's chopper, blunt chopper. It will go behind this heminucleus. The Sinsky hook is above and the joining of the two fragments are broken. The attachment of the two fragments are broken. Come to the other heminucleus in the same way go behind with the chopper and the Sinsky hook is above and by pressure these two pieces are separated. And now Visco 2% SPMC is injected again and now I'm going to emulsify the fragments. FECO power being used is 80% flow rate is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury and the machine is a very economic very much comfortable machine it is Oatly Catarex 3 it's a very powerful machine it can conquer this hard nucleus very much easily but the machine is okay but we have to train our hands to do this and we have to take care of the surroundings we must not cause any stress on the genule we must maintain the anterior chamber stability and then only we can do this safe FECO. The title of this video is going to be safe FECO. At every step of surgery, safety of the patient is in mind. Slow surgery, 
no hurry taking a lot of time and this surgery actually took 22 minutes it has been edited and it is it has come down to about 17 minutes so I have excluded only the portions where I didn't do anything just waited for some instrument or something this is the third nuclear fragment it has been emulsified being this is the last portion of the third fragment and this is the fourth fragment and this is the most critical part because though the antechamber is very stable any time we can catch the posterior capsule I'm going to show a safe technique where if even if you are using any other machine where the anterior chamber stability is okay but not hundred percent foolproof even then we can do a safe FACO we just leave a portion of this last nuclear fragment we will not emulsify the last portion of the last fragment we just leave implant the eye wheel in the capsular bag behind this nuclear piece yes I'm going to do that I have come out now I'm injecting visco filling up the capsular bag and the nuclear fragment has gone towards 6 o'clock and we can see there is hardly any cortex and here goes the intraocular lens this is super fob from upper Sami associates you can implant any lens but this is a good lens upper Sami has done so much for us Indian ophthalmologists not only Indian ophthalmologists for many countries they have made very much affordable machines so the nucleus the intraocular lens is in the capsular bag and now this is going to be a foolproof surgery 100% safety for the patient as I emulsify the last nuclear fragment there is no chance of causing posterior capsular rent at this time the precaution is I must maintain a gap between the phaco needle and the intraocular lens so that I don't cause any damage to the optic of the intraocular lens by the ultrasonic energy another gap is maintained between the end corneal endothelium and the phaco needle so that I don't cause any damage to the corneal endothelium and I did that well we will see some post-op pictures which I have taken four hours after surgery now whatever this this is a small nuclear bit uh, and it has come out we will check if some more nuclear fragments are there or not in very hard cataracts this happens a very small nuclear piece can remain hidden particularly when the iris particularly when the pupil has not dilated well when the size of the pupil is about this much about 5.5 or 6 millimeter a small bit of nucleus can remain hidden somewhere so we can use this oil hook use the irrigation to maintain the entry chamber and use the oil hook to see all around if there is any lens matter any lens nuclear piece hidden anywhere so I've checked about 180 degree now irrigation goes through the other side port and the oil hook from the other side port and I can check all around to see if there is any nuclear piece or any cortex or anything hidden anywhere and it is satisfactory there is nothing hidden anywhere so 
safety first in very hard cataracts particularly when there is no epinuclear cushion to protect the posterior capsule we can and we should adopt some technique to protect the posterior capsule if precedent occurs after so much hard work during emulsification of the last nuclear fragment it becomes a very frustrating incident so please consider this technique of I will scaffold for the last nuclear fragment with intact posterior capsule and now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber the antechamber is nicely lavaged and the antechamber is nicely formed and the case is concluded so we started from here and we have reached to this point and now let us see the post-op pictures after four hours cornea is clear antechamber is quiet pupil is dilated about five millimeter or five point five millimeter and the patient is fine uh, the 90D examination shows the optic nerve is ok the macula is also ok thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence